Hey, how's it going, everybody? Welcome back to Art of Creation Homestead. My name is Jason. We're in the kitchen this evening. Angela Kay has got a, a fun recipe for you. It's called Butter Swim Biscuit, right? Now, a biscuit swimming in butter does sound quite tasty, <laughs> but <laughs> she says she's made it before. I barely remember it. Okay, so I do think it's probably going to be dang delicious, obviously, but it sounds fun. It's going to be a different style of biscuit and it's just going to be delicious and tasty. So I'm going to turn it over to her and let her take care of this. Okay. As Jason told you, what we are doing today is butter swim biscuits. And if you have never had or never heard of butter swim biscuits, you're missing out because imagine a great big biscuit basically that has been cooked in a whole stick of butter that it's like it's been fried in butter. I'm telling you, it's to die for. Now, some things I'm gonna tell you here is gonna be very important. I'm gonna cook mine in a 10 inch cast iron skillet. Now, if you don't have cast iron, don't like cast iron, don't use cast iron, you can just do a nine by nine inch pan. But you're gonna get a crispier bottom, you're going to, it's gonna work much better in cast iron. But if you are using cast iron, I would say even if you're just using a nine by nine pan, this isn't very important. Do not put your oven rack on the bottom layer, right on the bottom shelf. Do not put it there because butter has a tendency to burn. So you don't want the bottoms to burn. So you want to put it one up from the bottom and the top rack, you want to put it one, one down from the top in case you need to put it on top. Now we have our oven preheated to 425 degrees and in this cast iron skillet or in your nine by nine pan, put in one stick of salted butter. Now we're gonna pop this in the oven and let that melt. Now while that bad boy gets all melted up, I'm gonna show you what, what we do next and it's, it's fall off log simple. It's easy as falling off a log. And here we go. In this bowl, we have two and a half cups of all-purpose flour. We have one teaspoon of salt. We have one tablespoon of sugar. And we have one and a half tablespoons, yes I said tablespoons, of baking powder. Not baking soda, baking powder. You want these puppies to rise. You want them to rise big and tall in all that butter. Now you wanna mix all that together really good. You wanna get all that mixed in real good. I'm just using a regular spoon. You don't have to use any fancy equipment for this. This, this is very easy, but very delicious, very worth your time to make it. Now I am using real butter. This is, this is my disclaimer here. This is my public service announcement for the day. I am using real salted butter. If you do not like salted butter, first off, what the heck's wrong with you? <laughs> Second, if you don't like salted butter, I understand. Or if you're vegan or something like that and you don't, well, vegan, you probably couldn't have these anyways because it's got buttermilk in it, so you couldn't have these anyways. <laughs> but if, you, if for some reason you can't have real butter or don't like it, you can use margarine. But I can tell you they're not gonna be as good. They're not gonna be near as good as, as with real salted butter. So, that's my public service announcement, it's out of the way. So now here we go with the rest of the recipe. Now to all of this dry mixture here, we are going to add one and a half cups of buttermilk. I use whole milk cultured buttermilk. I do not, for this recipe, recommend that you do the butter, the buttermilk substitute where you do milk with a little lim lemon juice or white vinegar. I do not recommend the buttermilk substitute for this. Nothing is gonna substitute for real buttermilk with this. So this is whole milk buttermilk. You can use part skim. It's gonna be okay, but the whole milk cultured buttermilk is gonna be the best. So you want one and a half cups of that. You'll notice I didn't work in any butter into it like you do your normal biscuits. I didn't work in any butter or shortening or anything like that. You don't need it. They're gonna be frying in a whole stick of butter. That, trust me, they don't need it. Because literally it's gonna be like they're frying in the oven. 
in a whole stick of butter. And if that doesn't sound good, I don't know what does. So now you just want to stir that together. It's going to make kind of a sticky dough. Now if it seems a little dry, if it, if it seems a little dry because it's going to be a little looser than a regular biscuit dough. It's going to be just a little looser. It's not going to be as, as thick and as tight as a regular biscuit dough. If you think it needs a little bit more buttermilk than that one and a half cups, you can go ahead and add a splash more, but I wouldn't add too much more. Now mine's looking like it may need just a little bit more. So I'm adding about a fourth of a cup more to mine. Now we do have a very dry air mass here lately. So that, and the heat's been on a lot. So that can contribute to you needing possibly more liquid. So I will say a cup and a half to, to a cup and three fourths is what I would say. And you want it to be a wet, a little bit wetter, stickier. See, it's wetter and stickier than you would normally do for biscuits. But this is what you want. That's perfect right there. That's perfect. And I used, I maybe added about an eighth of a cup, probably, extra. So now we're going to go check and see if our butter's ready. Now, as you can see, our butter's all, all melted and all sizzly. So now we'll go ahead and put our, our dough in, our biscuit dough. Now you want to rake it all out of there. You don't want to miss any of that dough. And you want to push it out to the edges of your pan. Now it's going to take a little finagling to get it out there, but it'll be okay because it'll bake what, what you don't get out to the edges, it will bake out there on its own. And as you can see, your butter's puffing up above. It's just splashing all up, all over that dough. Can you just taste it now? Can you just taste how good this is going to be? Now, this step, some people will do it, some people won't. I like to do it. You want to take, make you a nice cut. Make you a nice two nice cuts across, two nice cuts the other way. Now I know it's just smearing it, but you actually want to do that. The reason I think you should do it, some people don't do it, the reason I do it is because it allows that butter to seep in between each biscuit and allows it to butter to absorb into those biscuits really good. Now we're going to pop this in to our 425 degree preheated oven. Now, here's the instructions though. You want to put them in there, I would say about 10 to 15 minutes. You want to check them then. And if they're starting to get nice and brown on the bottom, which they will have a tendency to get brown faster in cast iron. If they're nice and brown on the bottom, then you want to switch them to, to the second from the top rack and let them finish getting nice and brown on top. That way you don't have to worry about them getting too brown or burning on the bottom and they can get nice and brown on the top then. I'll show you what they look like when they're ready to come out of the oven. These beauties are out of the oven. And I'm excited. And smelling, <laughs> smelling absolutely excited. amazing. They baked for, mine baked exactly for 23 minutes, but I would say anywhere between 20 and 25 minutes depending on what you used. Now if you used a glass baking dish, they may take a little longer because yeah. cast iron gets a lot hotter. But I gotta be honest with you, if you're making something called butter swim biscuits, I think you should put it in a cast iron skillet. That looks awesome. And you can see where I, I mm. cut them just a little so that the butter would seep down in between. So now I'm going to see if I can flip them. Look at that. Beautiful. That's look, awesome looking. And look at that crunchy Angel top. K. Look at that crunchy top. Ah. It's Some, where it's fried in butter. Man. That's awesome. And now Jason's going to taste it for you as soon as they cool off and he don't burn his pie hole. All right, look at this. Gosh, that looks so awesome. Man, that's just a beautiful picture. I, I like to look at that all day instead of me. You can blur my face out anytime you want to. Beautiful.
Look at that. And they just tore apart, honestly, where Angela Kay scored them up before she baked them. They just tore right apart, and you can just kind of break off pieces and get the gnaw on, which is what I'm getting ready to do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm. Yeah. It's delicious. Obviously. So crunchy. And how can something be crunchy on the bottom and soft and tender in the middle? Blows my mind, but it is. It's perfect. What else did you expect? Honestly. And this is amazing. It's going to be good now. It's going to be good tomorrow morning with my eggs. We're going to be good with some apple butter, some, some jelly, honey. What the heck you want to put on it? It's going to be delicious. I bet you anything, this can make the nastiest thing in the world taste good. <laughs> I really do. So, thank you guys so much for watching. We do appreciate it. My name is Jason. That brilliant one. Her name's Angela Kay. This is Art of Creation Homestead. We love y'all. God bless you and goodbye.